Amen. Let's read it. First I'm going to submit it for the seven. Then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord's. Take note, for the battle is the Lord's, and He will give you into our hands. Amen. Dito po yung about David, alam niyo naman po yun, di ba? Na he, David defeated Goliath by not in his mighty hand, but, but it's because of the Lord's battle. Amen? Amen. Do you have a giant in your life? Uh, yung Goliath in your life. Okay, let me, uh, let me share this to you. Every day I went to Metro. Ipuno yung Metro, di ba? Every day, every time that the the door is open to the Metro, it's like and there's a lot of people. In my mind, virus. <laughs> oh my God, virus. Di ba? Eh, kaya takamas ka, hindi natin alam yung virus. That's giant. Giant kasi dami nila, hindi mo alam kung sino nagdadala ng virus. So what do you have to do? We have faith, and we have to utter the in Jesus' name. That means that when I get called up to work, what is the giant that I see while going to work? The utilities that are paid, the bills, the requests from the clients that I want to come here, I want to come here, I want to come here. That giant is also that. Kaya sabihin, yung giant na yan, bago, bago mo, bago mo i-defeat, mag-other ka lang yung Jesus name. Defeat mo yun. In Jesus name, yung giant na yan, ay matadi-defeat ko. Amen? Amen. So it's not, it's not, uh, <clears throat> don't, don't make, uh, don't defeat our, don't defeat our enemy in, with our strength. But always think of this, that the battle is in the Lord. Amen? Can we stand up? Amen. <clears throat> Can I ask you, but don't answer, but you just answer in your heart. Before, we, before you come here, do you have any something in your heart? That you should not bring it to here, and should you should surrender surrender it to the Lord. Amen. So we should we should think only the goodness of the Lord. Amen. Kung ano man yung nasa puso natin, surrender na yun kay Lord. Because we cannot worship the Lord if you are bringing it here. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father God in heaven. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for bringing us our feet here, Lord, to worship you, Lord God, and to hear your word, oh Lord Jesus. Father God, thank you for your love, and thank you for saving us, oh Lord God. Lord, forgive us, oh Lord God, our shortcomings. Forgive us, oh Lord God, our sins of thoughts, actions, and words, oh Lord God. Today, O oh Lord God, as we worship you and listen to your holy word, O oh Lord God, give us encouragement to everyone's heart and everyone's life, O oh Lord Jesus. And Lord, Father God in heaven, we surrender to you everything, O oh Lord God, especially the service, O oh Lord Jesus. And we rebuke all the works of the enemies that hinders us, O oh Lord God. Father God in heaven, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Lord, we pray also, Lord God, that the people, your children, when you come today, keep them safe, O oh Lord God. And Lord, rebuke, we rebuke all the Lord Jesus for the hindrances that hinders them to Lord Jesus to come here, Lord God. Father God in heaven, we praise you, we give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So let us sing to the Lord and just remember the battle is in the Lord. Amen. Amen.
given to us this morning, oh Lord God. Let us shout, Amen. 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 Lord, this is all for you, oh Lord God. All glory belongs to you, oh Lord Jesus.
So I guess the topic today will be very short as well. So we will have a lot of time to talk about Jesus. Have you ever wept? Yes. yes. Is it shameful to cry unto God? No, right? Yeah. 
Do you think crying is a weakness? No, I don't think so also. Okay? Parents usually say big boys don't cry. So, as they grow up, they, they tend to um, suppress their feelings. Hanggang paglaki nila, maybe that's the reason kung bakit mas maraming lalaki na nagkaka-heart attack, no? Because they suppress their feelings, they don't have outlet. Naniniwala ba kayo doon? And women have the big mouth to talk and talk, <laughs> and we cry out a lot, no? Kaya less heart attack for the women. But there are also some great and um, brave men in the Old Testament who wept. Do you know Jeremiah? Jeremiah is called the weeping prophet. He really cried out. Um, he wept over his nation's self-destructive rebellion against God and cried out to the Lord. His mission is to proclaim the Lord's message without fear. For 40 years, Jeremiah warns of impending judgment against Judah, but virtually no one heeds his warnings to repent. So frequently he felt despondent, wala siya makitang fruit, after decades of ministry and almost but never quit. So hindi pa rin siya na give up. Who else? David. We know that David is so brave. He killed Goliath, right? But he sinned against God when he committed um, adultery with Bathsheba. Remember last week, our topic? But he repented and he cried out to God. You can see most of his writings in Psalms. One of them in Psalm 51, you go home and you read the book of Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. He really cried out and he repented. That's why David is also um, known as um, a man after God's own heart. Mahal talaga siya ni God. Amen? Who else? Job. You know Job. The man... Um, this man was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. Satan tested him and he lost everything except his wife. That's the worst part, right? Because sa lahat ng may iwan yung wife pa talaga niya. <laughs> Even the wife said, curse your God! But he didn't do that. You know, I love the, the, the one written in Job 1.21 said, naked, naked I came from my mother's womb, naked I will depart. What the Lord has blessed me, He takes away. And may the name of the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. So Job become blameless. He did not sin against God. He just um, prayed. He just grieved, uh, wept. He cried unto God, right? Many of us cry when a situation moves our hearts. Um, for me, the most thing that can move my heart or, or touch my heart is when it comes to my family. Some issues also moved the heart of Jesus Christ, and he wept. Do you know how many times did Jesus wept in the Bible? Do you know the reasons why he wept? So church, are you ready to learn? Tonight, and today we're gonna learn why Jesus wept, what are the reasons of his tears. So can I ask everyone to please stand up and let us read our text for today. Okay, one, two, three. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews had been with Mary in the house, comforting her, notice how quickly she got up and went out. They followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn her. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Notice what Mary did. He fell at the feet of Jesus, right? And he said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Next. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Verse 35, Jesus 
Yes. Hallelujah. Father, Lord, we thank you for this wonderful time, Lord. We thank you for gathering your people once again. Thank you for the life of all those people who came for this time, Lord God. Even the uh, weather is not good, Father God. They come, Lord. They want to fellowship with you. They want to hear from you, Father God. And we pray, Lord, that we will not leave this place empty-handed, Lord God. We will bring with us the lessons that you want us to hear right now, Father God. We thank you. We even pray for those people who are in Zoom right now, Lord. Give us, give them the attentive heart, Father, a focus, Lord God, to listen to your words, Lord. And whatever you want to reveal them right now, Lord God, speak to them, Lord. Let your their hearts be moved, Lord God, as Jesus heart was moved as well father god we thank you we give you all the glory lord in jesus name we pray amen amen, and amen. so additional um background here we all know that uh, lazarus okay pa? yes dead. that lazarus died and jesus waited for four days before he went there he did not go there immediately and then he met martha right martha did the same thing lord if you were not if you have been here my brother would have to have died, sabi niyang ganon. And um, you can see that Jesus saw the people and he was deeply moved in his spirit. Deeply moved here is from the Greek word embrimone, which means to be anchored, agitated, or perturbed in his spirit. Why does Jesus need to be angry? He saw the people weeping there, right? Remember it was written that the enemy of Jesus Christ is death because he is the resurrection and the life, right? So I think the anger and agitation that we see here is that Jesus was angry because of what the sin has done to his creation. He is angered by death and, that, and what it does to the families. He is angered by how sin destroys life because he is the resurrection and the life. Death is his enemy. Right? Sin is his enemy. And Jesus sees what's going on here. He sees the pain and anguish caused by the death of Lazarus to Martha and Mary. He sees the people there who are also weeping with them. And he saw also those people who are just there. Like, mga usisero, ganon. Diba? They are just bystanders. They want to see something. Why is Jesus here? After four days na nalaman niyang namatay si Lazarus, he did not come and now he's here. Jesus sees all of this and all the result of sin in the world. All the hurt, all the sadness, right? All the sufferings. It's all caused by sin. And the wages of sin is? Death. 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 Jesus knows that the wages of sin is death. And even the death of Lazarus itself, it is because of the sin in this world. What is the original plan of God? The reason why He created the people, the Adam and Eve and the um, all the people here is to have a fellowship with him to have to have everyone in eternity but because of sin death came into this world but because of sin Adam and Eve sinned against God so death entered into this world and I know that God is deeply moved he is angered because of sin because he see that Martha and Mary are so sad on that time they are mourning because of the loss of their brother right and it makes him angry because God is good, He is holy, He is righteous. And that is His enemy. It makes him angry because um, he sees that the original plan of God has been broken, right? It's been distorted because of sin. He sees death and it happened um, right now that death has a temporary victory. Kasi nagawa niyang patayin si Lazarus who is his um, one of his best friends, right? And he is indignant towards this. He is angry with this. But look what happened on verse 35. Jesus wept. Now wept here uh, from the Greek word dakrio. It means to cry deeply and softly. God, or Jesus, did not uh, sob or ano yun, yung naghahagulhol at nagwala doon. No. Dakrio means he cried deeply and softly. He wept and he he felt the, the thing that um, Martha and Mary feel. So our first um, reason is that um, the tears of Jesus were tears of sympathy. So we natin sympathy. sympathy. Those who are in Zoom type sympathy. This verse shows us an amazing picture of Christ, right? He is angry. He is 
agitated, and yet he wept. We can see that he is holy, he is righteous, he is, he is um, blameless, and yet he is compassionate, he is loving, right? And he is kind. He understands our pains and suffering. He sees the effects and consequences of sin in our lives and in this world. That's why he came to deal it once and for all, right? To defeat sin and death and give us the victory over those things. To fix what was broken by sin and to restore, restore all things for his father. Amen? He came to seek and to save the lost. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Okay? Jesus' friend Lazarus died. And Martha and Mary needed someone to share their pain. They had lost a brother and their hearts were broken. So even though Jesus knew that Lazarus will be resurrected, he's the one who asked him to rise up, right? But still, he wept with them. He wept with those who wept. You may be mourning for the loss of your loved one, sufferings, or maybe a broken relationship. Remember that Jesus carries your burden as well. I pray that John 11.35 serves as a reminder that God cares and His only desire for us is to comfort us. Jesus modeled what it means to mourn for those who mourn. He carried Mary's burden. We can do that also by carrying the burden of other people, mourning with them, right? Instead of telling them, Kung umiyak ka, dadrama ka na naman, tigilan mo yung katramahan mo. Most of the time, we don't feel what other people feel, right? So here, Jesus is telling us, we need to sympathize. And even we can empathize. You know what, what is empathy? Empathy is putting your, yourself at the shoes of other people. You know, I remember one time when I bring my friend and I asked mommy din to pray for her. Hindi pa siya deliver yung friend ko. Tapos, and then, there was a thing that mommy said, um, we need to put our shoes to the shoes of other people. And she looked at the shoes and she saw mommy and her uh, have the same shoes. <laughs> Ayun, thank you for laughing po. Ayun, parang na ano lang siya, dumilat siya. Sabi, ay, pareho kami ng shoes. Ayun, uh, konting segue lang because you're so quiet, okay? But this is a very um, serious topic actually because we want to understand what breaks the heart of Jesus because I believe whatever breaks the heart of Jesus should break our heart as well, right? He modeled what it meant to mourn to those who mourn, praise God. Let us read in um, 2 Corinthians 1, 3 to 4. God, come on, read church. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When we are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. Amen. Jesus Christ wept not because He was helpless. He wept because He wants to show us to mourn to those who mourn, right? To weep to those who weep to comfort others, to show them that they, we want to show them that we feel also what they feel. Amen? His tears reminds us that He is acquainted also with our pain. Kung kung sabihin kapatid that God doesn't know what you feel, what, kung anong nararamdaman mo right now. If you are in pain, God knows it. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin sa Lord, hindi mo kasi alam Lord kung anong nararamdaman ko. No. You cannot say that because He knew. He experienced that. And he knows better, maybe better than what we are, right? What we what we know. He knows he experienced the same, amen. And so he wants to encourage us not to lose hope because um, he can bring us through it. But also understand that sometimes he needs to bring us into that hard thing as well. So that we will see that all we need is what Mary did. What did Mary do? He fell under the feet of Jesus. Sometimes we need to go through this hard thing as well so that we will learn to fall down at the feet of Jesus Christ. I know that um, in my life, I have been also this time that I was too proud to pray. I was too proud to kneel down before God. And thankfully, I was brought into that place where I really need to fall down before Him that all my strength, all my Witness, uh, all my, my, you know, my knowledge, my abilities were completely insufficient. I need to fall down before Him 
so that I will learn that Jesus is the only answer. That Jesus is truly the only answer. He is the only way. He is the only solution to what we are experiencing. That Jesus is our Lord and Savior, right? We just need to fall down at the feet of Jesus Christ and learn and believe that He sympathizes with us. Amen po ba? Amen. Amen. So in Hebrews, it says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but as it was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Who is this high priest? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. He knows. He sympathizes with us. Amen? Okay, let's move further. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, okay, let's read all together, church. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, He offered prayer. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Son, though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and once made perfect, he made became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Jesus in his human form know that he's going to face death. If you know that they will crucify you later on, how do you feel? At this point, Jesus is in his human form. We all believe that he is God. At the same time, he is also human, right? Meron siya nararamdaman. He can feel kung ano masakit, right? So here, Jesus fold, um, know that he will <coughs> sorry for face that soon. Can we all read po? Okay, church, let's um, read it loudly so that we understand what we are saying. They went to the only group called Gethsemane, and Jesus said, Sit here while I go and pray. He took Peter, James, and John with him, and he became deeply troubled and distressed. He told them, My soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little further, fell to the ground. He prayed that if it were possible, the awful hour awaiting him might pass him by. Abba Father, he cried out, everything is possible for you. Please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. The weight of our sin separated Jesus from the Father. This is why Jesus asked the Father three times. This happened three times. Lord, if it is possible, take this cup of suffering away from me. But not my will, but your will be done. Jesus was submissive until the, until the death. Diba? He is suffering during that time. He even prayed, it was described in Luke, he prayed more fervently and he was in such agony of his spirit that his sweat fell to the ground like great drops of blood. Can you imagine how much Jesus felt during that time? He cried out to the Lord, Father, if it is possible, take this cup away from me. But not my will, but yours be done. So the tears of suffering or agony. Jesus cried because of suffering and Agony. It says here, fervent cries and tears. Do you know what is fervent? Wholeheartedly, what else? Um, heartfelt, deep seated, in Tagalog, taimtim. So he offered mga taimtim na prayers wholeheartedly with all, with all his heart. Are we submissive? Do we submit to the will of the Father? Do we submit to our leaders? I have already mentioned this to you last time, that our pastors, our leaders, are our um, spiritual covering, right? If you keep on disobeying your leaders, baka mawala tayo ng spiritual covering. Pag nagalit si pastor, baka mag-leave the group. <laughs> Gusto niyo bang mawala kayo ng spiritual covering? Amen. So we need to obey our leaders, our pastors. You cannot say that you are submissive to God if you cannot even submit to your leaders, to your pastors. Because they are the representation of God in our life, in our church, right? So we need to submit to them. 
Most of the time, we want to do it our way and not God's way. Amen? Most of us cry when a situation deeply moves our hearts. What might happen if we always pray fervently upon knowing what is happening in this world, those unsaved loved ones? What might happen if we fervently pray and not like just so casually praying, uttering all the verses that we know, making eloquent words to impress other people with our prayers? If we fervently pray, we will become an agent of change, right? And God will answer us with our prayers. James said in James 5.16, the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Even Jesus Christ cried out to God, right? This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of Him. We just need to be submissive. We just need to tell God, Lord, it is not my will, but let your will be done. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. So the first reason of His tears is tears of sympathy. Then tears of suffering or agony. He is human at the same time. He is God. He knows exactly what we feel and He also at the same time know the feeling of this. He will suffer soon. Fervency in our prayers. Balik natin doon. Ayan. Ayan mo na. Okay. Fervency in our prayers and petitions is act of reverence submission. We can bring our minds into submission by focusing on the majesty of God. Right? Asking the name of Jesus Christ and asking for the help of the Holy Spirit. Like Jesus did, we must cry out to God to help us from our um, spiritual death. You know? When we humble ourselves by crying out fervently to Him, we will experience peace and freedom for whatever things that uh, troubles us, torments us. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, word of the day? Fervent. Say fervent. fervent. Those who are in Zoom type fervent. 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 Heartfelt. Wholeheartedly. With all our heart. Time team. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the third one. Can we read all church? And when he drew near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, Wouldn't that you, even you, have known on this day the things that make you peace? But now they are hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies set up a barricade around you and surround you and hem you in every side and tear you down to the ground, you and your children within you. And they will not leave one stone upon another in you because you did not know the time of your visitation. Jesus weeping here is an audible weeping. Like he really cried out loud. He broke out to the Lord. He is so, um, yung feeling when you know, uh, let us see, yan, tears of sorrow. You know the feeling when you lost a loved one, yung alam mo hindi mo na sila makikita, mawawala na sila sa'yo. That is the feeling that Jesus had in this very moment. There is tears of sorrow, deep distress. Alam niya what will happen to Jerusalem. He knows that they will be captives. And he knows that they will suffer. Amen? Di ba ganun tayo? We, we protect our children. We love them. But if they don't heed us, gagawin pa nila yung gusto nilang gawin, it really pains us, right? Yes, we tell them, sige, gawin mo na gusto mong gawin. But deep inside, there is a sorrow. Deep distress. Right? This is what Jesus feel here. Jesus saw the future of Jerusalem and wept over its fate and devastation waiting for them to happen. As Jesus demonstrated, Church, the fate of the world must grieve our hearts as well and cause us to cry out to God in prayer for the sake of the world. The world's fate should create a sense of urgency to share the word, to share the love of Jesus Christ to everyone. Not just our family, but all over the world. Every nation, every nationality, every race. Amen? 
There should be an urgency for us because it broke the heart of Jesus Christ. It should break our heart as well to know that there are still unsaved people out there. Last Tuesday, Kuya Lito mentioned about fruitfulness. Where is our fruit? Are we praying for our unsaved loved ones? We cannot contest to God that we are so busy in the ministry, attending all the ministries, preparing for the worship, preparing for your preaching, praying in your most comfortable places. Reason why you don't have fruit? Lord, I don't have time to go out because, you know, I am the leader of this, I'm the worshiper, I'm the preacher. No. You cannot boast anything to the Lord, whatever you are doing in the ministry. The question is, where is your fruit? Are you praying for your loved ones? Are you praying for your neighbors, your housemates? Where is your fruit? Hallelujah. It is very important, brothers and sisters. When you have a fruit, it means that you share it to someone, and then alagaan mo sila. You need to follow up. You need to send them verses. You need to encourage them. You need to sympathize with them. You need to go on to what they are going through. Ate, I have this problem. Ate, I have these things. You should be there like what Jesus did. You need to be there to sympathize for them. You need to be there to weep with them. That is the fruit that we are tell, talking about here. Not just sharing the word and then kalas, tapos na, okay, nagawa ko na yung part ko. Oh, Jesus, I have one fruit already. It's not like that. Fruit is something that you need to train, you need to disciple until such time that he will come into maturity, that he will disciple others also. That is what we call fruit. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Are we ready to go? Yes. Praise God. Today is Go Movement Day. Amen? Amen? Amen. Okay. Every Christian has a responsibility to share the gospel with someone and we must use every outlet and every opportunity. We have our social media, right? Messenger, WhatsApp, Facebook. We can reach them. We can reach them through this and we can also take every opportunity that we have to share the love of Jesus Christ, to reveal to them that Jesus loves them. And of course, our topmost prayer should be the salvation of souls. Hallelujah. Amen? We should not deprive, we should not derive joy or pleasure from the faith of those who do not believe. When they mock us and accuse us falsely, love must drive our response. Diba even Jesus said, if they reject you, and yet, you know, pagpagin mo yung mo at take your kapayapaan with you. Shake off your feet on their houses and bring back the peace in you. Wag mo po silang aawayin. If they reject you, if they said, ah, oh, it's okay, I know that already. Bless them. Wag mo silang aawayin. Amen? And bring back the peace with you. Get, uh, let your peace return to you. Hindi yung lalabas ka or aalis ka that masamang masama na yung loob mo and your peace was already um, taken away. The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise as some understand slowness. Instead, He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. I pray that our hearts will be grieved by the things that grieve God's heart and we will recognize the time of our visitation. Amen. Jesus is crying over Jerusalem. He is crying over the hardness of their hearts. It was also written in Matthew. Can we read all together? And when he drove near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, Would that you, even you, have known of this day, that it is a day for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes, for the days will come upon you, and your enemies will set up Wait lang, church. This is not the correct one. Get the box. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stone those who are sent to it. How often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is to love to you desolate. For I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus Christ will no longer come again as a sacrificial son. He will come back as a judge. He will judge us all. He will come back as a real king. 
Minsan lang po inalay ang buhay ni Jesus Christ, it will never happen again. And some of these um, same people who see the miracles of Jesus Christ, who were there from day one, and yet they are the same person who will be yelling, Crucify Him! Crucify Him! Don't we realize that sometimes we are like that? <coughs> How easy it is for us to forget that Jesus Christ fed us, Jesus Christ healed us, clothed us, and yet we reject Him? How easy it is for us to forget all the things that He has done. We just, I know, you parang, we take it so lightly, what Jesus did on the cross. Jesus was saying to those people, and He is saying to us today, I gave you miracles, signs, and wonders. I met your needs. I clothed you and everything, and yet you rejected me. The same is still happening today. How does Jesus feel about the hardness of the heart of the people? Many times, the, the word has been preached all over the nation, all over the city, and yet still a lot of people reject Him. There is a worldwide rebellion and wickedness. Some countries legalize abortion, same-sex marriage, even marriage between man and animal. Can you hear that? Wars against nations. What else? Corruption. Killing is just because for the position in the government. Jesus must have been so weeping, right? I'm asking myself, how long will God take up all this? Maybe Jesus was weeping because he could, he could see that the people are still like mocking him, rejecting him. Think about all the times that the gospel has been preached all over the nation, and yet they still reject him. Time will come when God will bring judgment to people, and people will cry out to him, and he will say also what he said to those Israelites during the time of um, Judah, you know? They have turned back to the iniquities of their forefathers who refused to hear my words. They have gone after God's small g to serve them the house of israel and the house of judah have broken my covenant that i made with their fathers therefore thus says the lord behold i am bringing this other upon them and that they cannot escape though they cry to me i will not listen to them then the cities of judah and the inhabitants of jerusalem will go and cry to the gods small g to whom they make offerings but they cannot save them in the time of their trouble. Are we going to wait for this to happen? Do you want to experience the judgment of God upon you? Those gods that we serve will not save us in the future. There is only one God who can save, and that is big G, right? Not this small G. God, G, capital G, O, D. Jerusalem will go and cry to the gods of whom they serve, but they can, that cannot save them from trouble. Are we going to wait for this time? We can also ask ourselves this question. Would Jesus weep over me if he were still walking on earth today? Would Jesus weep over me? Would Jesus weep over my laziness? Over my ungratefulness? My uncaring? Would Jesus weep over my unbelief? My self-righteousness? Would Jesus weep over me? Because I'm just so lazy to share the word of God. Let us check ourselves. Let us check our hearts, brothers and sisters. Okay, so we're done. Jesus wept three times. Do you know the reason why he wept? Praise the Lord. Can we give a clap offering to our living God? Are you ready to wait as Jesus wept as well? Amen. We need to... Ayan. First, um, sympathy. Tears of sympathy in John chapter 11, verse 35. The death of Lazarus. Amen. His tears revealed to us that he is acquainted with our pain. He mourns those who mourn. He carries the burden for us. He, comfort, he comforts us. So we can also comfort others. 
We feel the comfort of Jesus Christ because He wants us to comfort others as well. Amen? Tears of suffering or agony. And Hebrews 5, 7, as a man, he know that he will face death soon. No? Physical and spiritual death. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he was in such agony of spirit that his sweat fell to the ground like great drops of blood. He offers us prayer, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. We need to submit to the will of the Father. Because Jesus Christ even submitted to the will of the Father until the point of death. Father, take this cup away from me, but not my will, but yours be done. Amen? And tears of sorrow or distress. In Luke 1941, Jesus wept over the city. Jesus wept over the hardness of the heart of the people. He performed a lot of miracles, signs, and wonders, yet they rejected him. Conclusion, Jesus wept. As followers of Jesus Christ, whatever breaks his heart must also break our hearts. Our topmost prayer should be the salvation of souls. We are saved not for ourselves alone. We are saved so that we can be an agent of change to the lives of other people. We are saved not just to sit in our comfortable places. Okay, I receive Jesus Christ. I am saved. Okay, I am fine. It's not like that. The purpose of Jesus why He saved us is that so that we will go and share the gospel to everyone that they may be saved as well. Hallelujah. Challenge. Would you make Jesus weep? If not, then go and share the gospel. Amen? Amen. Can we all stand up? All glory to God for Amen. Praise the Lord. <coughs> yes, Lord. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you, God, for your words today, Lord. Thank you for showing us, God, that you sympathize with us. Thank you, God, because we know that whatever we feel, you feel the same, Lord. Forgive us if we complain. Forgive us if we whine. Forgive us, Lord, if we are ungrateful. If we are lazy, too much lazy to share the word of God, forgive us, God. If we just sit in our comfortable places, not knowing that a lot of people out there are waiting to hear your words. There are still people out there who have not heard your words, Father God. Help us, God, to become submissive, just like Jesus Christ, even unto the point of suffering. Help us, Lord, to know that your ways are higher than our ways, God. Your thoughts are how higher than our thoughts, Father. Help us to submit to our leaders as they are the representation of Jesus Christ in our lives. Help us to submit to our pastors, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to fulfill the ministry, Lord. Not our way, but your way, God. Break our hearts for what breaks yours. Make our hearts grieve for the things that grieve your heart, Father God. Remove the heart of stone and re replace it with the heart of flesh. Make us weep just like Jesus wept. Make us weep for the unsaved loved ones. Weep for those people who still reject Jesus Christ, Lord God. Use each and every one of us, Father God. To be a channel of blessing to others. To be a channel of salvation to others, God. And today is Go Movement Day. Empower each and every one of us to go and share the gospel, Father God. And as we preach, Lord God, as we share your words, let your words come alive. And it will move the heart of the people who will hear it, Father God. It will move the heart of the people, Lord God. And they will know and they will see and they will know the truth and the truth shall set them free. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Lord, be with us, God. Be with us, Lord, that as we speak, Lord God, let
let your Holy Spirit speak on our behalf, Father God. That as we go and share your word today, Lord, no one will reject us. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. We offer up to you our lives, Father God. We leave everything unto you, Jesus. All the glory, all the honor and adoration belongs to you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.